Hi, I'm Liz from The Gaia Project. This video is an introduction to the heating calculations that go along with the process of doing an energy audit. Before we get started, I suggest you visit our website at www.thegaiaproject.ca in order to find the project guide that goes along with these calculations. This video will make a lot more sense if you have that in hand as you watch it. In order to obtain more information about the room that you're examining, the next thing to look at is the R values. You can do this three ways, either by inspection, by measuring the temperatures of the wall, or by measuring them directly experimentally. The first method, inspection, requires you to know something about the composition of the wall and of its thickness. The one thing that you need to pay attention to if you are going to use this method is that you use an R value that is an SI unit. If it's not, you need to convert it, otherwise your calculations won't make much sense. Let's say in this case, I'm looking at a 10 centimeter thick wall that's made out of brick. The SIR value of brick is given as 0 0.76 meters times degrees Kelvin over watts. Now, in order to find the R value that I'm going to be using in future calculations, I simply need to multiply the thickness times this R value factor that I found. So I'd have 0 0.76 meters times degrees Kelvin over watts multiplied by 0 0.10 meters. This gives me an R value of 0 0.076 meters squared degrees Kelvin per watt, which these units can also be written as 0 0.076 meters squared degrees Kelvin times seconds over joules, seeing as a joule per second is simply a watt. These R values can be added together in the case where multiple materials are simply going to be together side by side. The next method that we're going to use in order to find an R value is that of measuring wall temperatures. In order to use this method, there's a graph that's located in the project guide that you're going to need. You will also need multiple temperature probes in order to take the following temperatures, that of the inside air, of the inside wall, and the outside wall of whatever surface you're trying to determine the R value of. Using these temperatures and the graph, we're going to be able to come to a conclusion but what the R value of the wall would be. Now, before we get started, there are a couple important things that you need to take note of. First of all, avoid taking these measurements when a surface is in any direct sunlight, and try to take multiple, surf multiple measurements along the same surface, just in order to have values to compare to one another. These temperatures also need to be taken during the same time period, otherwise they won't be related to one another. The final method that we're going to look at for measuring the R value is to measure it experimentally. In order to do this, we simply need to rearrange the first equation that we looked at in order to express R in terms of other variables that we know something about. As you remember, the first equation that we had was Q is equal to A times T hot minus T cold, all divided by R. Now, we need to rearrange this so that we can write R as a function of other things. For example, R is equal to A times T hot minus T cold, all divided by Q. It's as simple as that. If we go back to the example where we had a heat loss of 354 watts, and that our temperature was going from 25 degrees Celsius to 20.7 degrees Celsius, it's possible for us to use this formula in order to find an average value for our R. The first thing we need to do is find an average temperature for the T-hot value. In order to do this, we simply add these two temperatures that we have, 25 and 20.7 degrees, and divide them by two. This gives us an average temperature of 22.9 degrees Celsius. Our T outside is also known as our T cold. 
Let's suppose that this value is minus 10 degrees Celsius, so we're going to be in the winter. We can now plug these values into our equation, r is equal to a times t hot minus t cold all over q, in order to find a, a number for our r value. Let's proceed. Using the same room that we had previously, so one with an area of 4 meters times 2.5 meters, we can plug in our numbers. So our t hot is 22.9 degrees Celsius, and we need to subtract our t cold from that, so minus, minus 10 degrees Celsius, all divided by our heat loss, which is 354 watts. If we continue on with this, <clears throat> we end up with the value of 10 meters squared times 32.9 Kelvin, seeing, as you remember, a temperature difference is the same whether it's in Celsius or in Kelvin, all divided by 354 watts. This means that our value for our value is 0 0.93 meters squared times Kelvin divided by joules times seconds. As you remember, watt is simply a joule per second. Hopefully, this video helped answer most of the questions that you had about the process of completing these heating calculations. If you still have questions, feel free to watch the video again, or contact us with any of these questions. All of our contact information can be found on our website at www.thegaiaproject.ca. Best of luck in your projects!